Can you break down for me and anybody who doesn't know how Google's search works and the difference between that and pre-search? And then we can get into kind of just the, the key features of pre-search. You talk about token and rewards. Um, so can you break down just how people search things on the internet? Yeah, so I, I mean, it fundamentally is fairly similar, uh, you know, really, I think the big difference between like a decentralized project like PreSearch and, and something like Google uh, actually comes back to more like the structure of it and the vision of it. And so, uh, you know, if you think of like the foundation of, of Google, it started off as an academic project and it was very, you know, kind of, uh, uh, you know, grassroots but then you know they took venture capital and then so as soon as venture capital comes in then you've basically got this class of people that is looking for an investment return and how do they get that investment return well you can either be bought or you can go public and if you go public then you're basically submitting to the rules of wall street which is basically drive as much revenue as possible and uh profit is kind of the barometer of your success and so what you end up doing in that model is basically uh, creating all these different stakeholders that have totally different objectives. So you've got a user and they want, you know, the best search results and they want, you know, generally privacy and they, they want to be respected. Uh, you've got advertisers that want, you know, the, the best results at, at kind of the best rate, ideally. Uh, and they want to hopefully have an audience that kind of respects them and an audience that's going to uh, last. Uh, but then you've kind of got this other group that has, you know, this this objective that is basically, uh, you know, extract as much as possible from both those two groups. And, and that's how they get their, uh, you know, rewards. And so by by having everybody kind of misaligned, you end up with a search engine like Google that does, you know, tracking and profiling and uh, all the, the things that people don't like, you know, they do a search on there and then they're surfing the Internet or, you know, they're they're men sometimes on a smart TV or whatever. And somehow they get an ad for the thing that they searched for. And it's because they've been tracked and profiled and it's kind of got this this creepy factor. Uh, and then there's the stuff that goes on behind the scenes that just none of us really knows about, uh, you know, in Qtel being one of the, you know, investors uh, division of the CIA in Google. I mean, who knows, right? Uh, and then you've got something that's more decentralized like research where basically, you know, the, the users and the, you know, the team, uh, the early crowd funders, everybody is basically aligned around the same value unit, which is the pre-search token. And so, you know, for the people who hold pre-tokens, like if the user is feeling uh, abused and, and if there's like negativity around that, then that's going to impact the token price. If the advertiser is not obtaining value, then that's going to uh, impact the token price. And it, it doesn't just, you know, kind of impact the funders. It's like the advertisers themselves hold the token. So they have an incentive to not try to abuse the users. The users, if they're delivering value to the advertisers and the advertisers value the token more, well, they are earning tokens. And so their kind of asset increases in value. So it's kind of like this flywheel where everybody benefits and we're all kind of on that same level playing field as the project grows and gets stronger the value of the token increases and then that benefits everybody versus Google where, you know, it's, it's like less than 1% of the people who use Google actually own Google shares. And uh, the way that it was started, it, you know, there was kind of this insider group that got access to really kind of all that upside within uh, Google equity. And, and so ultimately you end up with retail investors and sure there's still upside, uh, but it's like at a whole different level. Whereas this is like, man, we've got people who are uh, our biggest advertisers, also our most active users and our most significant crowd funders. And it's like the same person and they're, they're all kind of aligned around this, this same value uh, unit. And so, you know, there's the technological aspect of it as well, which again, not like super different uh, on, on many levels, you know, the, the crawling and the indexing and determining relevance. A lot of those things happen similarly. Uh, it's just that, you know, you've kind of got that, uh, that playing field that's been leveled. And then it's really more about kind of, uh, you know, just instead of having these massive data centers, 
we're distributing our infrastructure to all the unused computing resources or uh, you know, virtual private servers that people are running these nodes on. Instead of having this team of engineers working behind the scenes on uh, an algorithm, uh, it's open to the community so that they can help curate that uh, you know, determination of relevance and you know, through things like staking tokens and uh, other ways that they can confer uh, trust it enables the community to actually participate. So it's not like this black box. And uh, ultimately, you know, what that will result in is, you know, not this, this kind of monolithic vanilla search engine that's the same for everybody that is kind of, you know, in the corner of the powers that be censoring information that a lot of people are looking for or finding, you know, different kind of views on. And uh, it's, you know, providing people with something that, that, you know, is working really more for them in their interests. And especially ultimately as, you know, the governance model uh, takes uh, effect, then it's like, you know, it's, it, it's, to me, search is like a utility, honestly. Like it's, it's uh, you know, one of those fundamental core things. Uh, we need it for a free and open internet. And it shouldn't be in the hands of, you know, one company that controls 92% of all searches. I'm glad you brought up the um, incentive and values part because I try to explain tokenization to people and they're like, how's that different from Wall Street? And I'm like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> That's it, man. Honestly, it's one of the biggest things. And, and you know, there, there should be more communication around it because it's it's super important. Not Not only that, but I think, the, the nature of most of these, you know, crypto projects, I mean, we've got our Telegram group or, you know, there's Reddit and it's like the, the founders of the project, the people who are, are involved, they're there. If you have an issue, you can communicate with people. If you have feedback and ways that you can steer things and, and help improve it, then you can participate versus, you know, oh, well, if you were in the focus group, then you maybe got to have a say. But for the most part, everything is kind of done behind closed doors. And you try to, you know, you have this like team of people trying to determine what should we give them. And then they give it to you versus like, you know, we're kind of working out in the open and people are like constantly like, hey, this sucks or hey, this is good. Hey, did you think of this? Hey, I know this person and, you know, we can introduce you to their project and then this will unlock all these other doors. And so it's just a much more collaborative process as far as really building the project uh, versus, you know, a traditional VC backed or, or, you know, kind of Wall Street focused business. Yeah. So it, is that kind of the main difference? Because like you said, it's still kind of analogous somewhat to the past. But I think the main difference is, is that companies and projects are working out more in the open and not behind curtains, which kind of just behooves people to do things that might the public might not like if it was in the open. Does that kind of make sense? Absolutely. And there's kind of a different level of accountability. I mean, even pre like full decentralized governance, I mean, like, you know, good luck, uh, you know, getting your feedback to, to Larry and Sergi from Google, even when they were in the early days. I mean, there was like this huge wall around them. And so they could do things knowing that, hey, well, you know, worst comes to worst somebody's going to, you know, whatever, maybe vent on something, but it's never going to actually come back to me. I got to like show up. I do a weekly video every single week and I go through the YouTube comments from the previous week. And like, man, if people want to like, Hey dude, you're a dick, like then they can do it. And, and it's, you know, kind of that, that interaction uh, that is, is, you know, just at a whole different level uh, than, than in those types of, of entities. And so, yeah, I mean, there's, there's a, from a technological standpoint, definitely some differences, but it's, it's to me, a lot of just kind of the, the, you know, values alignment and, uh, trying to, uh, just, you know, be more connected basically. Will you always be this, um, accessible, like no matter how pre-search, how big pre-search gets in the future? It's going to ask as well. Like yeah, at, I, at critical at a critical mass, can you still have that transparency and, and communication with audiences? I, I I think you can, and you know it's it's always like like so you know we've got a, a team of admins within you know our our Telegram channel, for instance. So like, do I answer every question? Absolutely not. It's not possible. There's too many things going on. But like literally, uh, you know, I I'm lurking nonstop. 
and I participate, you know, when it's like something new, oh, this has never been asked before, or this is, you know, and then as I put that out, then the people who are the admins pick that up and then that becomes kind of the thing. So it's like evolving in real time. And, and, you know, I'm always like one degree away. It's like an admin has the ability to access me no matter what. And so, uh, you know, I think that is actually pretty scalable to tell you the truth. And I, I think that, uh, you know, I, I'm shocked, honestly, at like how, how accessible you can be and, and, you know, not have, you know, overwhelm on certain fronts. It's like, you know, uh, like, like Gary Vaynerchuk, like, you know, him putting his phone number out on billboards and stuff like oh, that. Yeah. And he's like, Hey, you know what? Like five people called me. It's like, you know, at the end of the day, uh, it, it, it's ultimately generally a choice. Do you want to be accessible or not? And, and, you know, for the most part, uh, a, a lot of the, the times where they're not, it's just that they choose not to be. Uh, you know, for me personally, honestly, I don't really consider myself as much of a, a technologist. I mean, I am, but uh, I'm more about people, man. I love people. I think people are amazing. And uh, that is, you know, truthfully, what I'm hoping really more to bring to the search space is more of like the human element of search, because it's so easy just to go to algorithms and to go to technology and to try to like fully automate everything and, and, you know, have this kind of like uh, autonomous system, which is, is good. Definitely in some respects, you know uh, we, we want some uh, you know, some processes to be autonomous, but ultimately uh I feel like sometimes with engineers, they don't do, you know, maybe what they, they should do, they do what they could do. And, you know, oftentimes the difference between should and could comes down to the impact on humans. And sometimes if you're just too disconnected from, from the human side of it, you don't really understand, uh, you know, what the actual impact is. And so you do, oh yeah, we could do this. It's like, you know, fully automated. Well, yeah, it's got all these unintended consequences and it, has you know ended up as a net negative for for the humans it's like i i don't you know really subscribe to that being the right way to uh, operate i'm you know much more about the amazing people that are out there in the world and trying to connect with them and trying to give them tools and and you know learn from them and be inspired from them honestly it's like there's so many amazing people that we cross paths with every day with this type of global project it's just, I don't know, that, that's what gets me excited. It's really not so much about, you know, financial resources. It's not so much about technology. It's like, man, there are like billions of amazing people out there and, you know, all the potential that we have and think of all the amazing stuff that we could do if we were better organized or if we were, you know, more cohesive even in, in a way where we realized, hey, you know what, there's some people that are kind of working against our interests. They don't want us to realize our potential. They're trying to suppress us. Let's try to support not just pre-search by any means, all the different projects. Like, man, there should be, you know, a competitor to pre-search and like bring them in too and like try to get more people onto these different alternative platforms that really want to help them unlock their potential and just move us all forward. We've got the technology. We've got these, these networks. We've got these ways that we can be connected but, you know, underlying that right now is like Mark Zuckerberg and Facebook and Wall Street and, you know, Google and all the other big tech companies. And it's like, man, if we just like, you know, kind of harness the good, but got rid of the, the bad, generally the controlling kind of, you know, narcissist, uh, sociopathic kind of, you know, side of things and, and went just more to like free humans just think about what we could do. It'd be amazing. You know? So that's, that's what gets me excited. Awesome. I think that's a good place to stop for humans and awesomeness. Yes. Um, you have a one, one last sentence you want to leave people with? Uh, no, just, uh, thank, thanks for watching. Uh, if you're interested, uh, presearch.org and, uh, thanks to everybody who's uh, been a part of it and who's, who's been supporting us. Appreciate it. Cool. Thank you so much, Colin, for coming on the show. I certainly learned a lot. Hopefully everyone else did too. Um, and yeah, I'm definitely going to start utilizing pre-search more now that I like know more about it because yeah. I want to be a part of the mission. Yeah, baby. I want to be part of your mission, man. Thanks, Colin. <laughs> appreciate thank it. You. Appreciate it. Uh, thank you, everybody. Colin, thank you so much for your time again. Uh, Thanks,